Okay, um, let's go down. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, fourth lecture. <clears throat> In the previous lecture, we have seen um, the design of a crank rocker, uh, a particular method where we chose uh, the fixed pivot O4, and then we chose uh, the length of uh, the output rocker and then came up with the design. Uh, the design was such that you could locate O2 at a wide variety of locations. Now, um, in many practical situations, it's not possible to, to kind of uh, have a free choice for the fixed pivot O2. Therefore, um, in, in the design, you would fix O2 and O4 locations. So, uh, so therefore, we are going to look at an alternate way to do this design uh, for the same um, rocker extreme angle theta, which is 70 degrees, which we did, and alpha, which is the angle between the two collinear positions, which was about 40.8. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go over uh, the logic and derivation for a, the uh, procedure, design procedure that we are going to set out. The design steps are basically four or five. It's very quick to design, but um, we are going to derive why we are going to do it in that particular way in a very general fashion, right? So, so let's go over. Uh, let's, so we start by picking O2 and O4 and we have already defined alpha and theta. So these are design choices that we have already made where theta is the sweep angle of the rocker, alpha is the angle between uh, the two collinear positions of uh, the crank coupler. Now what we do is we say, okay, let me draw uh, from O2 a line O2x at some arbitrary angle beta. So I've, I've shown this here. So you have O2, O4, which we have picked to be 2 centimeters or 20 millimeters here. Um, and then uh, from O2, we draw a line making an angle of uh, beta to this O2, O4 line. Now, what is this beta? It could be anything, just an arbitrary choice. And what we are going to do is to locate uh, the uh, uh, floating pivot corresponding to the rocker on, on this line, right? So that's what we are going to do. So we pick a point. Um, say B1A and then connect O4 B1A. So that's uh, one choice that we can make. So I have made along the O2X, I have selected here uh, B1A. So I have done that. And then uh, given that uh, I have an angle theta, so that will locate B1, uh, B prime 1A for me. So these are the two, uh, the dashed green line over here and uh, this uh, lower dashed line kind of represent the rocker extremes. So this is one possible design. Now, this choice of B1A is entirely arbitrary, right? Now, of course, you could stop here and say, look, um, I already have a design. I can close, uh, make a crank rocker of whatever I want and then uh, go home, right? Uh, but um, the um, thing is that we have not brought the angle alpha into, that, um, into the design. So therefore, you have to be a little patient. In this case, I have no idea so that uh, the angle that uh, is made between O2 B1 uh, A and O2 B prime 1 A is necessarily going to be alpha always, right? Whatever alpha here, of course, is the choice that you made, right? So you could make another um, choice. So we can pick another point. So you could get many designs. Um, and now you can see I put... Uh, Essentially, my uh, I, I, I placed the B1 prime uh, B1 B over here, and then correspondingly through swing through theta, and I get B prime 1 B. So <clears throat> you can see that uh, I, uh, another design. Uh, I can stop here again. Um, say that O2 B1 B is one extreme position, uh, which is uh, crank plus uh, coupler and O2 B1 prime B is uh, coupler minus crank and then come up with the design. But as I said before, we have no idea whether it will meet our alpha requirement as of now, right? So this is just, uh, we have not introduced that into the uh, design process. Now it turns out um, you saw those two positions. Uh, the rocker extreme positions uh, will be along a line uh, which is given by uh, this. So if you join that B1, prime A and B1 prime B, uh, 1 B. So this is along a line Y is it. So it turns out, uh, so you can make, uh, as you make choices along this, the rocker choices are going to basically be along this line. The Y is a line and the O2X line basically make an angle of theta. That is what I have marked here. So you can see that I have marked that angle theta that is out here. So these two lines make an angle of theta. 
all right so uh, i could make any intermediate choice and keep going now the interesting thing is that there is this intersection point so which is between the y z and the o2 x line which is called uh, which i'm going to call as b prime 1 0 uh, the zero basically because uh, that's a special case so this is the intersection point now uh, the intersection of b prime 1 0 if you think about it corresponds to an alpha equal to zero design right so uh, that, that's an interesting uh, uh, point there so this this if i choose so i could choose b prime 1 0 now connect this and then draw an arc and i'll get b 1 0 which basically is uh, the other rocker extreme position again at an angle theta so this uh, and you can see that that is alpha so you can see that uh, the various designs that we have looked at uh, correspond to different alphas so now um, we need to kind of generalize this procedure so that i can get it for the alpha that i have chosen so we will move a little bit forward so the key point is that we are going to focus on this uh, b prime one zero so let's pay attention to that uh, now the angle that is made uh, at b uh, by o2 b1 prime 1004 is 90 plus theta by 2 so let's go i'll i'll show this i have removed the other things from here what i've done is i if i choose b1 prime 0 as my design which is alpha equal to 0 case uh, and if i swing a, a, an arc and i can get b10 now if you look at this uh, this angle is going to be theta now that means this is an isosceles triangle o4 b10 is equal to o4 b1 prime 0 because it's the same rocker since it's an isosceles triangle, each of these angles are going to be 90 minus theta by 2. So this is theta. So the sum of those two angles will be 180 minus theta. So each of these angles over here and over here, that is going to be 90 minus theta by 2. And since this is a straight line, so O2x is a straight line. So this angle happens to be 90 plus theta by 2. So in other words, O2, O4 uh, at uh, B1, if I join in that triangle, O2, B1 prime 1, 0, O4 angle is 90 plus theta by 2. All right. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so that is 90 plus theta by 2. Now, this is independent of, uh, so what is interesting is that this angle uh, that you have 90 plus theta by 2 is basically independent of uh, the original angle beta that we draw, right? So that was arbitrarily drawn, O2x line was arbitrarily drawn at some angle beta, it could be 15 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever it is. But um, we see that uh, irrespective of what the beta is, uh, this angle is going to be 90 plus theta by 2. So which means that only the initial theta choice that we made is going to dictate uh, this um, uh, the angle there. So this is independent, which means that uh, we can now uh, clearly state that the three points O2, O4 and B-10 are going to be points on a circle. So where O2, O4 is a chord. So this is uh, shown here. So you can see that um, I have um, now, um, so using this O2, B1 prime 0, O4, we, we see now that we have a circle whose center is at C. And um, I can make so what what does this mean as i change beta what is going to happen this b prime one zero is going to move uh, at two different locations so when i draw say for example something like this here then i will have another b prime one zero so if i draw some line like this here then i will have my b prime one zero sitting there so the b prime one zero is basically going to be the locus of b, b prime one zero is a circle all right so now let us look at the angles in the triangle. So uh, B O2, B1 prime 0, B1, B, uh, which is the choice that we made, right? So you go back and now here is a, a, one of the design choices that we made, B prime 1, B. So if I look at the triangle formed by O2, B prime 1, 0 and B, B prime 1, B, and I look at that triangle. Now I want this angle to be alpha. So I am now going to dictate. So this choice now earlier, this alpha was varying based on the B prime 1A, B prime 1B, etc. Now, now we are going to dictate that it is going to be the angle alpha that we desire, right? So <clears throat> you can see that uh, the angle at O2 is alpha. 
the angle at b prime 1 0 is 180 minus theta because remember that this angle is uh, between these this line and the green line is extended green line is basically theta so therefore this is 180 minus theta and therefore the other angle is going to be theta minus alpha again uh, if you look at this um, in this triangle basically there is no uh, dependency on beta Okay, now um, as I said, the angles are independent of uh, the choice we have made for beta. Now the other thing is that as we move b prime one zero on a circle, we state that uh, b prime one b also moves on a circle. So this is uh, the concept of similarly varying triangles. So this is something that is new. You would have normally read uh, about similar triangles in your uh, geometry class in high school. But um, this is now something new that you are going to come up with, which is basically the idea of a similarly varying triangle. So let's let's look at what is the definition of a similarly varying triangle. So uh, consider a triangle now with one fixed vertex. And so this, this vertex remains fixed, but the other two vertices of the triangle uh, keep moving. Now they vary in, so as a consequence, the triangles are going to vary in size. Uh, but what is interesting is that the angles in the triangle remain constant. So the angle subtended at the fixed vertex is always going to be constant, right? So such triangles are basically what we are calling as similarly varying triangles. Now let's, uh, we already saw this uh, in the earlier uh, pictures. We will revisit that picture so that you know what I mean by a similarly varying triangle. So let's go back to this picture that I showed you a little while back. So let's look at the green dashed triangle. So the uh, O4 is basically the fixed vertex for me. This point B1A and B prime, B, B, uh, B and B prime are basically, you can see moving vertices. So I have one design choice where I had this triangle. Then I had another where you see that I have B prime 1B, the blue dashed triangle. Now, if you look at that, the angle that is subtended at the fixed vertex remains always at theta. And of course, uh, because it's an isosceles triangle, even though it's, it's changed in uh, size, the angles at these two locations always remain at 90 minus theta by 2 irrespective of the size. So whether it is the green triangle or the blue triangle, the angles within the uh, triangle remain as theta subtended at the fixed vertex and 90 minus theta by 2. This is a particular case. So now um, what do we mean by this? One of the things about this similarly varying triangles, what so? So therefore, uh, you will see O4, B1A, B1 prime A and O4, B1, B and B prime 1, B are basically similarly varying triangles. So their shape remains the same but their size keeps changing and the angles inside the triangle remain constant. So this is what we mean by a similarly varying triangle. Now so if one of the vertices uh, basically moves on a straight line, so what's the beauty of this? Such triangles, the similarly varying triangle, if one of the moving vertex, vertex moves on a straight line, the other moving vertex also moves on a straight line. So this is what uh, we have already seen. So now B1, uh, B1A, B1B is basically moving along. Um, you can see B1A, B1B is moving along this line O2X. And uh, so since that is moving along this line, uh, so moving along this, Therefore, uh, you will see that the other um, um, moving vertex is also tracing a straight line. Now, what's interesting is that the angle between these straight lines will remain the angle which is at the fixed vertex, which is theta in this case, right? So if one of them moves along a straight line, one moving vertex is moving along a straight line, the other moving vertex also traces a straight line and the angle between these is the angle subtended at the fixed vertex. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. Now, uh, what if it is not tracing a straight line? So it could uh, uh, now it, it could trace a circular path. One of the uh, moving vertices could trace a circular path. Then the interesting thing is the second vertex also does a, a circle. And in the radii of, are basically in the ratio of uh, the lengths from each moving vertex to the fixed vertex. So that is uh, one of the interesting things. So let's see. Now, uh, if I look at uh, the triangle, O2 B1 prime 0 B1 prime B, uh, we say that's a similarly varying triangle, right? So let's make different choices now. I'm, I'm showing this, of course, here I have sketched for alpha equal to 30 degrees. 
although we designed for 40.8 uh, earlier. So I am keeping theta to be 70 degrees and then I am sketching alpha to be 30 degrees here. All right. So you can see my first choice was uh, B10 corresponding to this uh, for an alpha of 30 degrees I get this B prime 1A. And so you can see now the vertex has moved from B10 to B20 and you, uh, the B1 prime A is now moved to B2 prime A and you can see this triangle is rotated and scaled but the angle subtended at O2 remains to be 30 degrees. Similarly, when I now move from B20 to B30, the corresponding point now moves from B2 prime A to B3 prime A. So you can see as I go along the orange circle, the B, uh, B0 point goes along the orange circle, the B prime point basically is moving around the purple circle. So, so you can see again uh, the concept of similarly varying triangles, if one of the moving vertex traces a circle, the other one also traces a circle. Now interestingly, if the centers of these circles, if I join to O2, which is uh, basically the fixed vertex of that triangle, the shape of that triangle, the, the, uh, the uh, O2C and O2G ratio remains the same as <clears throat> O2 B30 and O2 B3A or any of these. So they all scale in the same way. So the distance O2G by O2C is the same as O2 B3 B prime 3A by O2 B30. So that will help us um, locate um, the center uh, G of the circle, right? If I know the center C already. All right. So I have already mentioned these ratios. So that is how we locate the center for uh, G. Now I will show the location for G for the design case that we are looking at which is 40.4 uh, degrees. Uh, so you can see that it is located uh, sitting over there. All right. So that is the location of the center G for that circle uh, which contains that B prime 1B. Okay. So, um, so now we go back um, and ask the question. Remember earlier we saw the B prime and uh, the B, uh, B, the B1B and the B prime 1B, B prime B1B choice we were making along the uh, uh, straight line and we said that B prime also goes along the straight line. Now we are saying that look if I uh, keep moving the uh, B10, B20 on a, on a circle, B prime 1B, B prime 2B etc are also moving on a circle which implies now that B1B, B2B, B3B will have to vary along the circle. So, the, they, because that forms again a similarly varying triangle, right? Because the angle was theta, if you recall, at O4, which is the fixed vertex. The angle was theta, which is not changing. Therefore, uh, I will get another similarly varying triangle, whose center um, we basically can locate by reflecting G about O2, O4. So that's the easiest way to, to locate this because remember that this, this triangle is an isosceles triangle uh, at different shapes. So, we reflect g about the uh, center and we get uh, the location for h so it is shown here uh, you can also see that uh, this is a close up view then we can see that um, the um, circle is drawn here with this center now i have drawn the cent uh, circle so uh, on this circle b1 b will move so as i as b1 prime uh, b, uh, b b dash 1 b moves along this circle b1 b will move along that circle all right so this is basically the philosophy that we are going to use and now we are arriving at basically the design procedure for making the um, uh, or drawing the uh, uh, the uh, alternate method by which we can design uh, the uh, um, uh, crank rocker mechanism. Okay, let's go look at that. So the process act as usual starts by selecting O2 and O4 and we join them by a line. We calculate basically a, a quantity gamma, which is theta by 2 minus alpha. So if that angle is positive, then we draw a line from O2 at an angle gamma to the O2, O4 in a clockwise direction. If not, we draw it in a anti-clockwise direction. So sorry, uh, yeah, clockwise direction. If not, if it is negative, which will happen in our case, remember our case theta is 70 degrees, theta by 2 is 35 degrees. Alpha is 40.4, so therefore the difference is minus 5.4. So since it is negative, we have to draw a line uh, which is anti-clockwise direction from O to O4. If it is positive, we draw uh, an anti-clockwise uh, line from uh, O to O4. So uh, basically, we draw that line. Let's um, um, and then 
in order to locate that center uh, G, which is the center of the B prime circle. So what we do is, uh, so here I am showing you, uh, basically this is the line drawn at 5.4 degrees anti-clockwise. So you can see I have gone anti-clockwise. Uh, so uh, we have gone anti-clockwise direction. So in this direction uh, and drawn that at uh, uh, 5.4 degrees. From O4, we are going to draw a line which is at theta by 2 and we draw that in a, again in an anti-clockwise uh, direction from O2, O4 and you can see that it intersects that 5.4 degree line at G. And uh, so therefore, uh, we have located our uh, G which is the center for uh, the B prime circle. We reflect that about O2, O4. So you can see that reflection happens over here about the O2, O4 line. So this is the O2, O4 line. We reflect that about that and that locates H for us. Um, and therefore, that is the uh, center for the circle of the B, uh, B1 line. So, G is the center for the B prime B dash 1 line and uh, uh, H is the center for the, uh, uh, the uh, B, uh, sorry, uh, B1 line. All right. Okay. Now, um, you can decide to draw these circles either above the O2, O4 line or uh, you can also draw it below the O2, O4 line. One of these you have to decide because remember, uh, so let's let's go back. Let's look at the allowed. Um, okay. So you could draw it again because remember that uh, the rocker cannot cross uh, the fixed line of pivots. So I can choose them to be above uh, the fixed pivots or I can choose them to be below the fixed pivots. That's your choice. Then, um, so I draw these, so I effectively we are drawing semicircles and the radii are basically HO2 and GO2. Now the portions, I will show you these and the portions marked in gray are the portions which are not allowed for B1 and B1 dash. So you can see that um, the uh, this part of the B, uh, B, B1 circle, uh, I, I, these, this is the portion that is not allowed. Why? Because if I locate it anywhere here, remember from B1 it is going to swing from B1 to and it will have to cross the line of pivots. Therefore, at an angle theta, so this is one limit that I have. Similarly, if B1 prime is sitting, it cannot be over here because then that would mean B1 should be somewhere there, right? So therefore, you can see that this portion is the J prime to J is the area that is or the part of the circle where B1 dash cannot be located. Similarly, K to O2 is, is the part of the circle where B1 cannot be located. So that uh, you can get these by drawing a line. So here we draw a line at an angle theta 70 degrees um, in this, you know, uh, to O4. And that intersection basically J prime gives me the uh, limit of B1 location. Similarly, we draw a line at an angle theta again at O4, but from this side, so you can see I've drawn that theta equal to 70 and so this part of this uh, uh, semicircle is not allowed for B1. So you can now pick any point on the magenta circle. So I could choose something here and then accordingly I'll get a B1 prime that is going to sit there. So if I choose exactly over here, for example, B1, then uh, B1 dash is going to be at O2. So that is going to be the location that you will have. So now you can make a variety of choices, all of which will satisfy the theta equal to 70 degrees and this corresponds to alpha equal to 40.4. So the gen design procedure is very simple. So you set the select O2, O4, then calculate theta by 2 minus alpha. If it is positive, uh, draw a line clockwise uh, to O2, O4. Uh, if it is uh, negative, which happens to be the case uh, in our situation, so I have drawn O2, G anti-clockwise to O2, O4, located the, the G. How do I locate that G? I draw a line here at uh, theta by 2. So that angle intersection of that and this uh, gamma, which is theta by 2 minus alpha line gives me G. I reflect that about the O2, O4 and get H. G is the center for the B dash uh, circle and H is the uh, uh, center for the B circle. And uh, we draw then lines at uh, theta uh, at O4, two lines, uh, one making an angle theta with uh, which is uh, anti-clockwise as, as shown here. So this, this line and clockwise here as shown here. Uh, and uh, so this, this part in the B, B circle, this is the disallowed part. And here in the B prime circle, this is the disallowed part. 
So anywhere along the magenta, you can pick uh, either B or B dash, and then accordingly, the other one will get fixed because uh, they have to be at an angle of theta. All right. So, all right. So this is why we have discussed. So I have now designed uh, a mechanism. Uh, I have taken L1 to be 30, L2 to be 11.5. L3 happens to be 51.4 and L4 equal to 36.2. Okay, so here is uh, the mechanism animation. Let me run that uh, for you. So that is one uh, position. Now it will move towards the right. The rocker will move towards the right. So this is the other configuration where it's a straight line that uh, the angle is about 36 to 106 which is about uh, 70 degrees. So you can see clearly that we have that 70 degrees that is there. Okay, so, so now we now have a design. All right. Now, interestingly, this, this procedure, of course, uh, the alpha doesn't have to be positive. So, if you have alpha negative, then, uh, of course, the time ratio will happen to be less than 1. So, since alpha is negative in this case, gamma, which is theta by 2 minus alpha, will always be positive. So, therefore, we draw clockwise uh, the angle gamma of uh, 2 over 2 over 4. Now, I will leave you with something to ponder about what happens if theta by 2 is equal to alpha because remember that we are drawing this line which is theta by 2 minus alpha. So, if I pick an alpha, so in our case, let's say 70 degrees, I had picked an alpha which is 35 degrees, then this is going to be 0. So, this is an interesting thing. You, uh, I will just give you a hint that um, one could use this to basically, of course, you can do a 4-hour design, which means all uh, revolute pairs, you will get a particular case. I leave it to you to figure out uh, what kind of 4-hour uh, mechanism we will come up with. It can also be realized using, I will just give you a clue, using a slider. So, this is an interesting thought with which I will leave you at this stage. So, that will end uh, this video. So, basically, uh, we have seen a, an alternate method to construct where we choose the fixed pivots and then we have gone through a proof to finally come up with a simple design procedure for uh, doing this. Okay. So, I will stop here.